Hello, everyone, and greetings from SSUC Online, Southminster Steinhauer United Church, where we are spiritual seekers, scattered but gathered in quest and in community. Wherever you are this morning, whether you are alone or with others, whether you are in your living room, your family room, your kitchen table, your office, your den. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for taking this time to be with us. And whether it is morning or afternoon or evening, where you are, thank you for being with us to sing together, to pray together, to reflect with one another, and to receive the gift of music with one another. A special welcome to SSUC Saskatoon who are gathering together today in a safe way at St. Andrew's College, their home, and the space that they haven't been able to gather in since March of this year. We hope that you are enjoying the opportunity to be with each other and also that you are celebrating the remarkable work you did in planning and hosting the Expressing Wonder conference that so many of us experienced two weeks ago. Joining me in greeting you from SSUC Edmonton today, at the piano, Micah, and on vocals, Carolyn, and in the booth, Brett and Darian, and with me here, Dawn, who will share some poetry with us. Chris is enjoying a few weeks of uh, vacation time, a well-deserved break, and we wish him uh, well in this time away uh, to be uh, doing other kinds of things in life um, and coming back to us in mid-November. We are continuing exploring our series, Tonic for Troubled Times. Last Sunday, we began with the tonic of gratitude, and today we continue our exploration as we consider the medicine of music. Amid the wonder of life, wherever we are, we seek the music our hearts long to hear. In the crispness of this new season, wherever we are, we seek the music our hearts long to hear. In the sadness and gladness we hold, wherever we are, we seek the music our hearts long to hear. In the midst of trouble and beauty, amid the brutality and compassion of our humanity, wherever we are, we seek the music our hearts long to hear. As we gather, we take time to pause and honor the land that holds us, the land we call home, and honor the first peoples who called our land home. For us in Edmonton and in Saskatoon, we acknowledged Treaty 6 territory traditional meeting ground, gathering place, and traveling route of Cree, Soto, Blackfoot, Métis, Diné, Nakota Sioux peoples, Aboriginals, immigrants, and refugees, all of us together, are blessed by the sacred lands and waters with which we seek to live with one another and with this land in deep respect and in true mutuality.
said we are to dance on this ground with the rhythm of saints to carry the sound we hold a prayer for the earth for the ones yet to come may you walk in beauty and remember your song blessed we are to dance on this ground with the rhythm of saints to carry the sound we hold a prayer for all life for the days yet to come may you walk in beauty and remember your song If you have your candle close by, I invite us where we are to light our candles with one another. This candle is reminding me that there are many sources of light. One of the reasons we spend this time with each other is to honor all that brings light into our lives, the various sources of wisdom that speak eloquently to us, the natural world, the wisdom of poets, the teachings of spiritual guides such as Jesus of Nazareth, 
the songs that have made their way from the hearts of composers and communities and singers, the lived experiences that we share with one another, the meaning-making moments along the way. We light our candles today as the symbol of our spiritual quest, the light we both seek and also celebrate in our evolving spirituality, the light we seek to reflect in the circles in which we live, in our work, in our neighborhoods, among our families and friends, our community, and even in the ways we express ourselves as global citizens. As we light our candles this day with each other, may we open to seek light, reflect light, and honor the light we find in one another. Today, I want to share with you a story we shared some time ago. The story is simply entitled, Grateful. And some stories are best sung rather than spoken. So this is a song of giving thanks, and the words that we will hear are the words of John Buccino. The voice that we will hear is the voice of Art Garfunkel. And the illustrations that we will share are the work of Annalisa Hakkarainen. And we take this moment to consider all the things that draw us into the tonic of gratitude.
morning from the American-born Palestinian poet Naomi Shahab Nye, entitled The Song. From somewhere a calm musical note arrives. You balance it on your tongue, a single ripe grape, till your whole body glistens. In the space between breaths, you apply it to any wound, and the wound heals. Soon the nights will lengthen. You will lean into the year, humming like a saw. You will fill the lamps with kerosene, knowing somewhere a line breaks, the city goes dark, People dig for candles in the bottom drawer. But you will be ready. You will use the song like a match. It will fill your rooms, opening rooms of its own. You will sing. I didn't know my house was this large. You will be ready. You will use the song like a match. In the words of this wise poet, may we find wisdom for our living. Thank you. 
We've heard the wisdom of a contemporary poet. Now we hear an ancient story from early Israel. In the book of First Samuel, we hear many stories of their conflicts with their neighbors, of their struggle for good leadership. This is one of those stories. It comes from First Samuel chapter 16. Now there was a spirit that came upon Saul, the king, and tormented him. And his servants said to him, When the spirit is tormenting you, command your servants who look after you to find someone who is skillful in playing the harp. And when that spirit descends, the musician will play for you, and you will feel better. So Saul, the king, said to his servants, Find me someone who can play well, and bring him to me. One of the young men in his service answered, I've seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who is skillful in playing. He is a courageous man, a warrior, careful in speech, and also a person of good presence. So Saul sent his messengers to Jesse, and they said to him, Send me your son David, who is with the sheep. Jesse took a donkey that was loaded with bread, a skin of wine, and sent them by his son David to the king, Saul. And when David came into Saul's presence, he became one of his servants. But Saul loved him greatly and chose him to be the one to bear his armor. Saul said to his father, Jesse, let David remain with me, for he is a great help to me. And whenever the spirit of darkness came upon Saul, David would take out the harp and would play it with his hand, and Saul would be relieved and feel better, and the dark spirit would lift from the king. In this ancient story, may we too find wisdom for our living. I've often said I can't imagine a world without music. But during these pandemic months, I have a new appreciation for music as medicine. I've come to think of musicians as physicians of the soul, healthcare workers, as essential as any worker I can imagine, bringing the art and the science of sound to elevate mind, settle troubled spirits, calm busy minds, quiet anxious bodies, raise our mood. 
From the beginning of the pandemic, our week has been punctuated with multiple doses of music. Every Sunday, we get a healthy dose of music with you right here. Every Monday, we participate in an online program called Sing and Awaken. For 90 minutes, we are steeped in simple chants and ballads, times of holding silence and sharing songs that speak the longings of our hearts for a better world. On Tuesdays, we seek out music and meditation of vespers like hour of poetry, saxophone and guitar, with a gifted musician and United Church minister, Peter Woods, from Mackay United Church in Ottawa. Later in the evening, we connect with Lior Safati for his hour of heart songs. Simple Hebrew and English chants and melodies that envision peace and well-being. And we've been tuning in to YouTube concerts with that individuals of the Edmonton Symphony Orchestra have generously created and shared during COVID. We've been enjoying Facebook Live concerts that some of our favorite singers and songwriters have regularly been offering over these months. And like so many of you, we have relished those pop-up concerts that our SSUC musicians offered during the summer months, giving us the gift of music in community and the mini folk festival kinds of events offered by so many local musicians like those that were supported by the McGonagall's in the outdoor park space adjacent to their home. This strange time that's been devoid of so much has been richly medicinal in music inoculating us against despair and isolation. Music's been a tonic in these troubled times. And it's hardly some kind of new fangle-dangle, untested therapy. I'm intrigued by that ancient story of music therapy in the text of the Hebrew Scriptures we just heard. The backstory to that story is a cautionary tale of be careful what you wish for. You just might get it. The ancient Israelites from whom that story comes suffered from royal envy. They wanted a king, just like all their neighbors. They wanted a different and new system of government, replacing their judges with a king. So as the tribal tale goes, their prophet anointed a tall, handsome drink of a man by the name of Saul. It doesn't exactly inspire our confidence that the prophet met the future king because the future king had lost his father's donkeys. So they crossed paths as Saul was searching for daddy's donkeys. The Confederation of Tribes were about to learn the wisdom that Oscar Wilde would speak centuries later. There are only two tragedies in life. Not getting what you want and getting what you want. So they got themselves what they wanted. They got a good-looking, entirely inexperienced king. Never mind that he didn't have any leadership experience. Never mind that he didn't have an aptitude for leadership. Never mind that he couldn't even begin to meet their expectations for a great warrior king who would deliver them from all their enemies. He was cute, but he wasn't qualified. And he struggled with his own demons. The story suggests that he was prone to some kind of inner darkness, whether it was anxiety or depression 
or some mental illness? The story doesn't tell us. We just know that Saul was deeply tormented. And what seemed to help him the most was the medicine of music. In the world of the story, he found refuge in the company of a young musician who skillfully played his harp. David was described not only as a good musician, but also as a man of good presence. And that young healer of Saul's soul would one day become Israel's legendary King David. This story came back to me as I recognized the tonic music has been for me in these troubled times, this time of cruelty, in a time that lacks civility, that reeks with an ethos of disrespect that characterizes public life, as acts of fear and hatred dominate our news, and the realities of coming into winter with pandemic rates rising shroud us. The value of music as therapy has been recognized not only anecdotally in our own experiences, but also in several scientific studies. It's intriguing that making music has been helpful to so many healthcare practitioners who are on the front lines of this pandemic. I've been inspired by the music of Voices Rock Medicine, a virtual choir of female physicians based in Toronto, who've been offering their gift of music to inspire and support us in this challenging time. I want to share with you a little taste of their medicine.
during my dad's final illness, I learned something about the mechanics of the heart. But beyond mere biology, one of the finest lessons I learned in that time was about the music of the heart. A very passionate and experienced technician took great delight in teaching, tuning us into the music of the heart as she narrated what we were hearing as she conducted an echocardiogram. And as I listened to the swooshing of blood through vessels and the rhythm of a heart beating, I realized that the heart sings. It's not only a muscle, it is a musical instrument. We're all musicians, whether we can play any instrument or carry a tune, it doesn't matter. We live in a musical instrument that's entirely dependent on percussion. So perhaps that's why it's in our nature to seek music, not only within us, but around us. Every river has its own song. Those of us in this room are hearing the song of the fountain because it's in the nature of water and rock to sing together. The ocean keeps its time with rhythm. It keeps the beat. The birds sing the sun up and sing it down. The trees clap their leaves. The sound of music isn't just a 50-year-old musical. It's the nature of life. It is the nature of the universe to sing. In this troubled and troubling time, we learn the wisdom of the poet, Naomi Shihanai, that Dawn read for us just a moment ago. We listen. Because from somewhere, a calm musical note arrives. In the space between breaths, you apply it to any wound. And the wound heals. The poet isn't speaking about a cure for all that ills us. She's speaking about a pathway of healing for our wounded and wounding spirits. Soon the nights will lengthen. People dig for candles in the bottom drawer. You will be ready. You will use the song like a match. There is a song, there is a melody, there is a tune. There are notes being played that will be for us what David's harp was for Saul. So in these coming days, even this day, let us open to the medicine of music.
mystics have told us that to pray is to sing twice. Perhaps because prayer is sometimes sounds, sometimes silence, sometimes the spaces between them. We take this moment with one another to pray together, to strengthen our intentions, to live in ways that are more faithful to the music within us and around us. So we pray with one another. We embrace the sacredness of all life with awe and reverence. And we commit ourselves to work for a more fair and just world. We seek to live with deep intention that all may have enough for today. May we let go of all the guilt and regret that encumbers us and embrace relationships of trust, offering, and receiving forgiveness as a way to freedom. May we be inspired to find meaning and purpose in our living, working to transform challenges into opportunities to grow and thrive. May it ever be so. In these words that are a revisioning of the prayer of Jesus. I want to share a few announcements and invitations with you as we come to the close of our time with each other. There's an opportunity immediately following this time to connect with a few others on Zoom in a chance to have a circle kind of facilitated conversation and go a bit deeper as you explore together the medicine of music. At 11.15 today, you can uh, find the link on uh, the e-messenger that you received on Friday, or if you didn't receive it or have lost track of it, just email me at the address you see on your screen, and I'll be happy to get that to you. Also, an invitation you see on the screen, we would invite you to share with us this week how it is that you are experiencing the tonic of music in this troubled time. Send us an email or a text and let us know the music that you've been connecting with or the opportunities that you've had to find music that sustains you in this time. In uh, a week after this coming week, there will also be an opportunity to explore the next installment in Tuesday, in Tuesday Topics. Coming also this week, our new kids program for the fall and winter, uh, launching on Wednesday of this week. You'll uh, find uh, stories, uh, at-home family activities, movement, and songs to help kids find compassion in helping others, in finding ways to be brave in this time, in finding ways to love ourselves and, and help our world. So please look for your uh, e-message from us midweek this week. Ariane and Daisy are looking forward to sharing some lively online episodes with, with our younger families. I also want to express appreciation for the ways that so many of you have been supporting us and helping us to continue to do all the things that we do as spiritual seekers united in community here, supporting outreach organizations in the Edmonton area, supporting the Mission and Service Fund, which uh, supports organizations not only across Canada but around the world and helping us to maintain our facility and to make it available for community groups to use and to support the staffing that uh, we have uh, committed to with one another. So uh, you'll see on your screen ways that you can support us. A reminder that you can purchase grocery cards uh, each uh, Thursday here between uh, 10 in the morning and 1 in the afternoon. You can leave Ainsley a message on the office phone or send an email and pick those up on, on Thursday afternoons, th Thursday mornings.
As we come towards the close of our time with one another, we share a song that we sang all together here in this space in 2019, a song we have sung so many times, a song about the influence of music in the healing of the world. And so I invite you to sing with our voices a little blast from the past that we bring forward into the present and take with us into the future. We sing with one another, turning of the world. Just before we change the light of our candle, I want to express our congratulations and share some good news. We're delighted to celebrate uh, Carolyn and Micah's engagement and this exciting time in their lives as they begin to plan for their marriage commitment to be celebrated in the mountains in May of 2021. And so please receive our excitement for and with you uh, our gratitude for you and our blessings on this time of excitement and joy in your lives and in your family. We change the light from flame to the energy of smoke. As we take our leave of this time, but empowered and infused with the wisdom we've shared, the thoughts that we have had, the wisdom we have heard, the music we have shared. And we go into all that this week asks of us, and we go in peace and strength. We go with hope. We go offering the gift, the story's character, David, offered to Saul, we offer the gift of being people of good presence. We go making music in the bodies we live, 
in the world that needs us so much. Be safe, be well, and we look forward to seeing you soon.